Hi guys! So today in class we started off our cells unit. We talked about prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And tonight we're talking about some of the parts that are in different cells. So up here we have a bacteria cell. That's a prokaryotic cell. And then there's an animal cell and a plant cell. Those are both eukaryotic cells. So I'm just going to go down the list of the important parts and tell you what they are, where they are, and their function. You have a chart, and on there it has the, um, the parts and the functions, and in the middle it asks you to check off if they're in the bacteria cell, the animal cell, or the plant cell. Some of them are in just one, some of them are in all three, some of them are in two. So first of all, the plasma membrane. All three types of cells have a plasma membrane. That's just the membrane that surrounds the outside of the cells. And remember, back from our biochemistry unit, it's made up of phospholipids, so it's made of a lipid. And so that's the inside membrane here on the cells. Now, two of these kinds of cells also have a cell wall outside that plasma membrane. Plant cells and bacteria cells have a cell wall outside. Animal cells don't. That's a little bit um, more rigid, more structure uh, for those cells. A nucleus, you might remember from class today, that only eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. So only the animal cell and the plant cell have a nucleus. It's this big kind of circle thing. Um, and that's where the DNA is held in there. So sometimes it's called the control center of the cell because that DNA is the genetic information. The nuclear envelope surrounds the nucleus in both the plant and animal cell. Remember the bacteria, um, bacterial cell doesn't have that nucleus. The DNA is just free floating there. So there's no nucleus and, and nothing surrounding it, no nuclear envelope surrounding it. The nuclear envelope also has some pores on it. They're shown as dots here, but they're actually little holes where things can travel in and out of the nucleus. The cytoplasm is the soup of the cell. And so all three um, types of cells have that soup. And it's technically everything except for the nucleus. So it's, it's the other organelles too, the other cell parts. Everything besides the nucleus is the cytoplasm. Sometimes you'll also hear the word cytosol, and that's just the liquidy part of the soup, not the organelles. So that's a little distinction there. The ribosomes, you'll see those in all three kinds of cells. They are the little you see them just as little dots, and I forgot to put the free-floating dots on the animal cell. But the ribosomes are really important because that's where proteins are put together. Remember, proteins are made up of amino acids, and they need to, those amino acids need to be put together. And that happens at the ribosomes. So they're in all three. In plant and animal cells, you find them free-floating. Actually, in bacterial cells, they're free-floating also. But then in plant and animal cells, you also find them on this thing called the endoplasmic reticulum. So there's a rough endoplasmic reticulum and a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And where you have ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, that's the rough ER, we call it, endoplasmic reticulum. And so that's where the proteins are made that are going to get sent outside of the cell. Because the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes they call it the highway of the cell, it helps kind of transport things. The smooth ER, that endoplasmic reticulum that doesn't have the spots on it or the ribosomes on it, that's where lipids are synthesized or lipids are made. So that ER is this kind of squiggly lines coming off from the nucleus there. So it's transporting things, it's uh, making lipids, making proteins that are getting sent outside of the cell. The Golgi apparatus looks like kind of flattened disks. Again, this is only in animal cells and plant cells. And what that does is it packages things up. You see little kind of circles at the end of it. Those are vesicles. So Golgi apparatus takes things in, packages them up, sends them out in vesicles, um, sometimes to other parts of the cell, but usually outside of the cell. It's packaging things up to go outside the cell. You might hear that as a Golgi complex sometimes also. Vacuoles, again, are just in plant and animal cells. In animal cells, they sometimes just look like little bubbles, um, but in plant cells, they can be really, really big. Uh, vacuoles hold things, sometimes it's just water, sometimes it's waste products, 
In plants, vacuoles are really important because they fill up with water and it uh, makes this thing called turgor pressure. So the plant is pressurized and it gives it structure. And that's what helps um, non-woody plants be able to stand up is that turgor pressure. Lysosomes we'll find mainly in animal cells. And if you remember from hyd hydrolysis, remember hydrolysis from biochemistry, lys means to break. And so lysosomes are little vesicles, so they kind of look like bubbles too, um, that inside there, they break down material in the cell. You will find some lysosomes in plant cells too. So they're breaking down like old cell parts, things that need to be um, just kind of getting um, gotten rid of out of the cell. So you won't find those in bacterial cells, but in plant and animal cells. Very important now, mitochondria. Those we find, again, just in plant and animal cells. And they are these, they look kind of like elongated ovals with, they have an inner membrane too. So they have two membranes. And what happens there is um, cellular respiration. So both plant and plants and animals do cellular respiration. That's where uh, the cell takes food energy and makes it into cell energy so the cell can do the work it needs to do. Getting toward the end, chloroplasts. These we only find in plant cells because that's where photosynthesis happens. And they're these, um, they're kind of oval-like organelles and inside there's these stacks of discs and they are green in, even in real life uh, because that's where the chlorophyll is, that's where the light gets absorbed. So chloroplasts just in plant cells. Finally, cilia and flagella. You won't find these in plant cells. You will find them sometimes in bacterial cells and sometimes in animal cells. Cilia are the little hairs um, and they can kind of beat all together in motion to move the cell. And then flagella, you can have one or you can have multiples, and those are longer and they're kind of like, act like a whip or a, almost like a rudder on a boat sometimes where they can um, propel the, the cell and kind of help it steer around. So those are the main cell parts that we're going to focus on. We'll talk more about them tomorrow. Have a great night.